Welcome, Vault Dwellers. My name is Nacho Bidness. I'm making this series both because I'm having fun and to illustrate how much creative freedom we have for roleplay in Fallout 76. This video is Chapter 9 of my profile for my character, Nacho, in Fallout 76. In the last video, I briefly summarized the main plot for Fallout 76. We begin today's chapter some months after the climactic final battle with the Scorched Beast Queen. I hope you enjoy my excursion into creative writing. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. After the battle with the Scorched Beast Queen, Nacho is restless. After all, what does a man do after he has already saved the species from extinction? Where do you go from there? Nacho does find a few, very few, new friends after the vault opens. Everyone prefers nicknames these days, so he calls them Worthless, Bones, Choppy, and Echo. Echo is especially close, leading Nacho into all kinds of silly hijinks. The first time Nacho meets Echo, Echo talks Nacho into jumping off of the highest point of the gigantic New River Gorge Bridge. Nacho quickly realizes the irony, remembering how his father had asked, if your friends jump off a bridge, would you do it too? Nacho reckons that his dad wasn't accounting for the way power armor prevents the wearer from getting hurt in a fall from any height. The adventures with Echo range from repairing a dangerous nuclear power station to wearing sparkly dresses and performing song and dance routines in other 76ers camps. Mostly, the duo have spent a lot of time teaching each other how to run successful businesses after the end of the world. Nacho and Echo have benefited each other greatly and each has made a lot of bottle caps, the accepted currency at the many confused, automated shopkeepers across the land. Nacho misses people he used to know, not friends, not exactly, but good allies he knew from the vault just after it opened. Folks like Jpic, Draco, Phoenix, Quicksmoke, Loco, and many more just didn't seem to come around as often. He supposes that life moves on even after the apocalypse, but he still wishes he could see them sometimes. Nacho has been changed by the waste, and not just emotionally. He's lost what was left of his hair from the stress. He bears physical scars, including a big one on his face from an aggressive, mutated lizard called a death claw. He barely survived the encounter. He is also mutating into something not quite human, from strange serums obtained from the Enclave Bunker. He can turn invisible at will, provided he's standing still and nearly naked. When attacked at close quarters, his skin emits electroshocks and beams of radiation at random. He heals unnaturally fast, but alcohol, drugs, and medicine have little effect on him. He runs at incredible speed, but gets hungry and thirsty in no time. He can jump to great heights and carry massive loads, but he doesn't feel quite as smart as he used to. Lastly, he has lost most of his teeth from the repeated radiation exposure. He can't eat meat anymore, but he makes a mean bowl of vegetable soup. Mostly Nacho spends his time stocking his store with cheap goods his fellow dwellers might need. He charges fair prices because he doesn't believe in gouging his customers. He uses the caps to buy plans he doesn't know from robot vendors across Appalachia. He's stockpiling them in the hopes that a new faction can use them. During his adventure, Nacho found logs and terminal entries from an organization called the Brotherhood of Steel. Their stated goals of archiving knowledge and trying to prevent mankind from falling into a second dark age 
sound noble. Essentially, Nacho thinks the nuclear war has some parallels to the burning of the library at Alexandria. Nacho still remembers hearing that story as a boy and still speculates on the different course history would have taken if that calamity had never happened. He worries about the heritage of knowledge being lost to future generations. The Brotherhood also appeal to his memory of his librarian mother. They sound like an order of warrior monks with the highest of ideals. The last of them in Appalachia sacrificed themselves trying to defeat the Scorch Beast Queen. Without the vital clues that they left behind, it is unlikely the 76ers would have succeeded. Nacho knows that other groups of the Brotherhood of Steel are out there, but they are a continent away on the west coast in the ruins of California. Nacho hopes to somehow present his collected knowledge along with the camp system to the Brotherhood someday, a gift to be shared with all mankind. What Nacho hasn't realized is that the Brotherhood in real life may not match his ideals. The Brotherhood archives say a lot about collecting knowledge, not a word about sharing it. Sometimes Nacho considers returning to Oklahoma, maybe find out what happened to his mom, who is still young enough that she might be alive, or perhaps find Sean, his best friend from high school. Maybe even visit the OSU campus and try to find out what happened to his friends. But it's 1,200 miles across a radioactive wasteland. And in his heart of hearts, he knows what he will find. Sometimes wondering is better than knowing. Nacho learns that lesson the hard way when he tries to find his buddy Ray, the man who helped him survive the journey to West Virginia. Nacho travels to Black Bear Lodge looking for signs of his friend. Ray had a job there pre-war, but Ray never showed up at the vault on the day that the bombs dropped, even though he had a place inside. Nacho finds a holotape from before the bombs that details the lodge owner's plans to hunt humans for sport. And among the skeletal remains in the basement, he finds a skull with a gold tooth, just like Ray had. Nacho doesn't even have the chance for justice or revenge. Ray's murderers are long gone. They clearly survived the bombs. The stuffed, mutated animal heads throughout the lodge make it that clear. But Nacho doesn't know if they were killed, if they succumbed to the Scorch Plague, or maybe if they left Appalachia entirely. It's this last possibility that disturbs Nacho the most that these brothers may have gotten away with it and maybe are still getting away with it somewhere out west. Nacho can't tell for certain which bones go with which body. It looks like the victims were butchered and scavenging animals have had years to scatter what's left. Nacho sadly buries everything he can find in a mass grave. There are too many mass graves these days. Too many people have died to bother burying them one at a time. And yet, not enough mass graves either. Appalachia has too many corpses, and not enough people left alive to bury them all. Despite the victory over the Scorch Beast Queen, Appalachia remains deserted. The 76ers are just too few to make a dent in all that empty space. Appalachia is like a haunted house full of unburied dead. The roarings of mutated horrors, the babbling of malfunctioning robots, the wails of the remaining scorched, and the rustle of the wind are the only sounds that break the stillness. All else is waiting and silent and silent. Stay tuned for chapter 10, Nacho Meets a Stranger. Thanks for watching.